Yeah, that's working. Hi, so uh, I'm Tim Booth. Uh, I'm currently based at Edinburgh Genomics up at Edinburgh University in Scotland. Um, and for the next five minutes, I'm going to be talking about uh, these things here on the left. These are uh, Illumina HiSeq 3000, 4000, or HiSeq X sequencing machines. Uh, and they're kind of the workhorse of any uh, current center that's producing uh, DNA sequence data. If you're not familiar with these things or you don't use them, you can zone out for the next few minutes because I'm, I'm really focusing on this kind of technical stuff. Anyway, um, with these machines, you obviously uh, you've got to load your DNA into them to sequence it. And so um, the lab put it onto these uh, things called flow cells, which is the, the blue stripy thing in the middle. And uh, on the flow cell, uh, it's divided into little tiles. Well, you, can, you can't see them in the image, but it's divided into thousands of tiles. And uh, if you zoom right into one of those tiles, um, you'll see on the modern, the latest generation of Illumina machines that they're micro-etched with these little pits, uh, these wells. And the, uh, the final diagram here on the bottom right is kind of a schematic representation, just showing that the wells are kind of arranged in a honeycomb formation. And uh, the idea is that uh, it's, it's really nice and neat. Every uh, little uh, fragment of DNA you want to sequence goes and sits in its little well. Uh, and then the first stage is amplified up. And then the machine runs through a series of read cycles. Each cycle adds a, uh, an extra uh, nucleotide to the, uh, to the read that it's producing. Uh, it's saved out in this raw format called BCL. And then when the whole run finishes, you convert it all to FASTQ and you, deliver, and you go and do your analysis. And it's great. Now, obviously, this is biology, so nothing's ever quite that simple. Uh, there are various uh, problems and glitches and issues and quality control, things that you have to take into account. And one specific issue uh, that this talks about is uh, this idea of well hopping. Now, this is, this is not something I've come up with. There's various uh, blog posts and there's quite a good recent publication, which I forgot to link in the talk, uh, describing this in detail. But essentially, uh, your, your sequence that's in uh, the blue well in the center there is not staying put. It's ending up leaking out into the surrounding cells. So you're actually reading the same sequence multiple times. So it's a, it's a true technical duplicate. And uh, you want to uh, avoid these if possible and at least quantify them because uh, not only are you wasting sequencing space by sequencing the same thing again and again, but if you're trying to do uh, something like RNA-seq, you want reasonable uh, sort of quantification of the amount of sequence you've got, this is going to uh, upset your numbers. So there's a, a kind of standard way of detecting this by aligning your reads to the genome, uh, and then further down the line, Picard tools will tell you how many optical duplicates it thinks you have. Um, the problem with this is, although it's very robust, it's not very fast, and of course you need to have the FASTQ files, and you need to have a reference genome that you are able to reliably align them to in order to get this uh, result out. So we wanted to get something a bit quicker, maybe a little bit dirtier, but uh, we want it quick and we want to be able to do it with, for any type of DNA or any, anything that we're sequencing without a reference. So we have a sampling strategy and there's little, uh, the approach was to make this uh, Python tool uh, which picks uh, a, a subset of the wells on each tile uses them as a center of a target, which it's going to sample, and essentially it's going to look around that central well to see if there's any duplicates, uh, duplicate sequence, and it's going to do that by looking directly at the BCL files. This is the raw data that's coming off the sequencer, not the FASTQ data that you generate in the next step. Um, and as a result, there's no reference needed. You can run it actually while the sequence is in progress, because these things take like a couple of days to run through all their 300 read cycles or so. Uh, so you can actually tell the lab that there's a problem with the uh, flow cell while they're pr putting the libraries on the next flow cell, uh, which they find very useful. And the whole thing runs in under two hours, and that's like on my laptop. If we stick it on the cluster, because it really parallelizes incredibly easily, uh, you're looking at 10 minutes to run the scan. So it's really quick result. Um, and you can run the software very easily. The first step where you uh, Thank you. You prepare a map of all the indices that you're going to sample, so that actually looks at the geometry of the flow cell and comes up with a sampling strategy. And then the second command actually counts the duplicates and comes up with a report. The report looks like this, so it gives you various spiel. But the thing you care about is right at the bottom, there's an overall duplication, which is the number of wells that it's found to be duplicated. 
uh, for reasons I can't go into in the next 30 seconds. That doesn't quite tally with the result from Picard, so you also get a scaled uh, equivalent value, which is then comparable to what Picard says is the duplication rate. Um, and the final thing, uh, if you're not interested in the tool, but you're interested in reading BCL files, then I'll just point out that within that tool there is a library that can read uh, BCL data directly, and so this is just some Python uh, code showing I was able to load the library, select a run, select a tile, and then I can get a bunch of sequences, and it's optimized for subsampling, so I've given it any sort of random sequences and it will pick them out from the BCL and return them as this block showing the sequence and uh, whether the sequencer thought it was a good read or a bad read. So that's it. Thank you very much.